know, over the last few weeks, I've had a lot of conversations with a lot of companies about workforce automation, uh, productivity improvements, work redesign around AI. And so I want to take a couple of minutes to just talk to you about the use cases and where we are in the implementation of AI for essentially re-engineering the way we run our companies. Now, what we're basically dealing with in most organizations is many, many business processes from sales, customer support, finance, marketing, HR, product management, supply chain management, operations, healthcare, nursing, all over businesses all over the world where there are step by step by step by step work practices that have been developed and automated in the traditional model of automation. And the traditional model of automation is as you go from step to step, you track the progress of your steps in some system. This is what ERP is about. This is what HCM is about. This is in some sense what CRM is about. And then that data is stored and used later to make the individual employee or worker more productive or more successful in their role. So the second time and the third time and the fourth time, they have to do the same thing. It's easier and easier and easier. The problem, of course, with that you know linear workflow orientation to business is that it is linear. A lot of the steps are manual. And in some cases, in many cases, the technology is actually slowing you down because you're using the technology to track something that you don't really need to track. And so even the implementation of salesforce.com or Zendesk or case management tools uh, requires a level of discipline and rigor and training of the individual person to enable them to use the tool that's supposed to make them more productive, which, you know, of course, has a lot of backlash associated with it, including change management and education and communications and so forth. So what AI can do through generative AI initially, and then agentic AI and other forms of AI, is it can literally remove steps that would normally take thinking or um, data analysis or checking in a system and and simplify them down and the agent can do the steps on behalf of the employee. And I almost like to think of this as digital twins or digital assistants as employees that will do things on our behalf. For example, in the, in the area of recruiting, there are 30 to 40 steps involved in going through recruiting meeting with the hiring manager, generating a job description, trying to figure out if the skills of that job description are correct, looking at the pay levels, benchmarking the job description against outside job descriptions, coming up with a title, coming up with a level, then sharing that information, publishing it into the ATS, uh, promoting it in the market, buying advertising, sourcing candidates, finding candidates, getting them to apply, getting the applications in, scoring the candidates, trying to figure out which candidates to reject, going through the filtering process to um, get other people involved in that process so you're getting candidates that are collectively the right ones, then screening them, then calling them and assessing them, perhaps going through interviews, perhaps going through tests, bringing them in to meet them, and eventually making them an offer, and then getting them to accept the offer, discussing things like schedules, shifts, benefits, vacation policies, other aspects of the work that might affect the candidate's decision, and then getting the person to start and then teaching them what the job is and going through onboarding. I mean, there's at least 30 steps. There are maybe 40 when you add it all up, many of which are done by individuals in the recruiting function, schedulers, other administrative people. Um, it's a big, and that's only one business process. You look at things like closing the book at, at the end of a month, producing a new product and launching it, going through engineering, phase releases of new products in engineering. Um, all sorts of things like this are all over organizations. Well, a lot of those steps require information that can be generated by systems on behalf of employees. A lot of those steps can be eliminated by AI, reducing the number or headcount of recruiters or recruiting coordinators. I'm just thinking about recruiting, for example. And 
that you can turn the AI on for the consumer so that the customer, the candidate, the employee, whoever it is that you are acting on behalf of supporting can use AI systems through a conversational interface to get the information they need narratively in a form that's really easy for them to consume, maybe on their phone or maybe through text, to prevent a lot of these steps being created by the service agent, the IT professional, the HR professional, or whoever it is that's working on their behalf. So we have this massive opportunity to automate the back office work that we do in companies and to transform the front office work that the employees and customers and prospects and partners um, go through to interact and work with us. Now, we're only two years into generative AI, um, maybe only one year really into generative AI and agentic tools. And most of the tools are very, very immature. They're very powerful. In fact, they're more powerful than most people realize, but they haven't been designed into linear, uh, functional, or necessarily industry use cases yet, there will be more and more because all of the, the core application vendors are gonna build agents into their applications, but that's just beginning to come right now. So many of these are custom implementations where you buy uh, an AI platform, uh, which may have agentic features and gen AI features and other features in it. And then you learn how to apply it through to the business processes in your organization uh, based on what you think the biggest opportunities are. And as I've just written about it, actually in a report that we're just publishing, there's essentially two scenarios here. One scenario is we try to wait for a vendor solution that seems to do what we want, which again, will take a little bit of time. The second is we implement the technology and we experiment with it and we decide based on the technology's fit to our company where it's gonna add the most value. And I think that latter second approach is the most powerful at the moment because the technology is so powerful, but the industry use cases are not all built out. So if you're doing business with a vendor that has a scalable platform and has experience in your industry and your domain, you're probably going to do the second scenario. Now, I can't tell you where this is going to go, but I can sort of sense that where this is going to go is the AI will become so intelligent <laughs> that we will think about it as a very, very smart, very, very highly connected digital employee. And so a worker today that's going through this linear process of doing something on behalf of a client or a customer or an internal employee will be able to talk to the AI and communicate with it either verbally or through text or through screens. And the AI will do things on their behalf and come back with answers and speed things up. And, um, and that's really what's been going on in, in all of the business reengineering and the product development of tools like Galileo that we're, we're working on. I hope this is helpful in understanding the power of AI. Most of the use cases I've looked at, the productivity improvements are spectacular. I mean, taking things that take months down to weeks or hours, eliminating 60 to 70 to 80% of the steps in a lot of business processes. So this is worth the effort because the technology that we have available to now is extremely powerful in these kinds of re-engineering projects. And if you think about your customer, whoever it may be, whether it be an end user customer, an internal employee, or a business process owner, as the key stakeholder in this, let them guide you through the process of simplifying these processes and making them more efficient for your company and for your organization as a whole. I hope that's a little bit of helpful thinking and we'll be, we'll be continuing to talk about case studies and examples more and more as we learn more.